we see in this time of stay-at-home mandates, we try our best to keep us all connected despite having to be physically apart for the time being. And one way to stay connected is sharing with each other things that interest us. So tonight, our EBC friend, Jillian Andrade, will show us how to make these mouth-watering garlic knots. Take a look. Today, I will be making garlic knots. For your dry ingredients, you will need two and a half cups of flour and one teaspoon of salt. For your wet ingredients, you will need one cup of warm water, one and a half teaspoons of yeast, and one teaspoon of sugar. After mixing your dry ingredients, your wet mixture should look like this, a bit more foamy and bubbly. Now combine your wet and dry ingredients and mix with a spoon until it comes together into a dough. Make sure to mix this dough until all the flour in the bowl is fully incorporated. Once combined, flour a clean work surface that you may knead your dough on. Make sure to evenly spread out the flour. After flouring your surface, place your dough onto the floured surface and get ready to start kneading the dough. First, flour your hands so that the dough does not stick to your hands while you're kneading. To knead, press down on the dough and fold it over and do this in repetitive motions. Place your dough into a floured bowl and cover with a wet towel, allowing it to rise for 30 minutes. After allowing your dough to rise, place your dough back onto your floured surface and flour a knife in order to start cutting your dough into pieces. So I cut my dough into 32 pieces by cutting the dough in half, cutting those halves in half, making them fourths, cutting the fourths in half, making them sixteenths, and cutting the sixteenths in half, making them 32 small pieces. After cutting your dough into pieces, set those aside and allow them to rest for an additional 5 to 6 minutes in order for them not to rise while you're shaping them. While your dough rests, preheat your oven to 475 degrees Fahrenheit. To make the garlic knot shape, stretch out a piece of dough into a long strand of dough. After doing so, wrap it around two fingers and tuck the ends underneath the bottom of the dough. Once the dough has finished rising, Go ahead and start shaping your dough into different shapes. You can get creative, like doing a dough ball if you really wanted to, or you can do different shapes like stars or pretzels, uh, hearts, circles. Once you're done, place your dough shapes into the preheated oven and allow that to bake for 20 to 25 minutes. Or you can keep an eye on it and allow it to bake until it's golden brown. For the garlic butter, you'll need one teaspoon of salt, five tablespoons of butter, and four cloves of garlic. Once your butter is fully melted, add in your garlic and your salt. For me, I chose to use garlic salt instead. As soon as your bread comes out of the oven, brush your garlic butter onto the tops of the bread to get that garlicky flavor. You can do two layers of this butter if you'd like to get that extra garlicky flavor. This is optional, but you can top it off with a bit of Parmesan cheese. From Santa Cruz, California, I'm Jillian Andrade. We live in interesting times.